Hello everyone, welcome to Snap Take. This is Glacier of Snap Judgments, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone, and we got some OTA. We are going to go over all the OTA goodness, but before we do, I'm going to tell you all about our huge giveaway for the month of September. Every month we give away more season passes than everyone. Here's what that means. We're giving away at least five season passes for the Loki season. One time only, another season pass will be added for every 200 YouTube subscribers, going up to 14 season passes. Every single video posted from the time of uh, this morning is a chance to win a season pass. The giveaway will not take place at the beginning of the season, though, because we need time for development. Honestly, I need time for my bank account to recover from my trip to London. So the giveaway will take place on September 15th. So September 15th video, I will be giving away those season passes. If you can't wait the week for Loki, I understand. Buy the season pass, no harm, no foul. You'll still have it, but everyone has a chance to win that season pass on September 15th. We are also giving away three uh, month subscriptions to Marvel Snap Zone Premium. Three of those winners of those season passes will also get Marvel Snap Zone Premium, which includes free coaching from the legendary 10 free group coaching from the legendary 10 is a huge value finally to enter you subscribe on this here youtube you must like and comment on da- on a daily video on youtube during the contest period winners will be pulled from the youtube comments each day i.e at the end of the two week period i'm going to look at this video and all the comments and random number generator one person will who commented on this video will win the season pass i'll then comment under that person's um under that person's comment to reach out to me and i'll do an announcement video and at that point they will win then tomorrow's video that will be another set of entrants with one giveaway all you have to do is comment and yes you can enter every single day by commenting watching the videos make sure you're subbed you don't miss out and you have a chance to win some days i'll have specific comments i want you to make but for today just comment hopefully you like this new way of doing the season pass i kind of wanted to see experiment with getting away from twitter or x for the month because they're just so obnoxious to work with so here is how we are trying this giveaway let me know in the comments what you think about this style of giveaway enough of this let's ota Y'all ready for the OTA? It is 831 and down with the hawk seems to be the theme of this giveaway. All right, we've got our August 31st card balance OTA update. Thanks to Kirillis, the wonderful Marvel Snap Zone writer and creator for his help with this. We've got Doom returning to his floor, former glory. No longer are Doom bots uh, four power they're back up to five power we've got captain marvel being nerfed from a four five to a four four she was overperforming and for a while the top most winning card in the game so she is now down legion gets the nerf we all expected is from five eight to a five seven rock slide is one of the biggest changes from a four five to a three three and lady death strike goes from a five three to a five four that one's huge we're going to talk about all of these as we get to the cards and the decks so the first one we're going to talk about is doom doom bots being six five is absolutely humongous with the advent of silk into the meta with the advent of absorbing man copying um brood being at five power being at four meant doom was fundamentally an unplayable card it was too easy for it to lose to things your opponent was doing incidentally in the most popular decks is a 6-5 enough to bring Doom back? I think so. I don't think he's going to be um, as omnipresent and powerful as he was. I think the game's power has sort of caught up to him. But I think he is now, again, one of the better sixes in the game from not really being in the conversation as of a few hours. Our first deck for Doom is a classic Lockjaw. This is a nice, simple Lockjaw deck that basically wants to use Doom to spread power out. Lockjaw decks can sometimes have problems getting power in multiple spots on the board. Well, not with Doom. Doom is also, if you have a bunch of big stuff still in your deck, say a Magneto or an Infinite, an excellent thing to throw into Lockjaw on that last turn. If Doom pops out of Lockjaw or Jubilee early, then last turn, that is a great thing to play Odin on. 
Um, the rest of the deck is fairly self-explanatory. You snap on Lockjaw. You want to get Thor out. You want to get Jean to get uh, Wasp and Mjolnir to throw those into Lockjaw. And then you want to play big old stuff to win the game. This deck can be vulnerable to Shang-Chi, but we haven't seen much less Shang-Chi uh, than recently. So I think this is a reasonable meta call right now. It is also to its benefit, besides Jeff, a Series 3 only deck. And Jeff can very easily be replaced with Nightcrawler in this deck. Although, honestly, the card I might replace it with is actually Series 4, and that would be Spider-Head. We've got Doomtree. The best deck in the game right now is a variation of this deck um, that's running fundamentally. It's trying to go Forge into Brood into Absorbing Man and then say, I've got 15 power and 2 lanes that I can then pump with Surfer and with Patriot. It's incredibly powerful, and Blue Marvel is the case, maybe. It's incredibly powerful, and Doom adds an extra way to put another 5, 7 of Patriot out, power into those lanes. It's another way to sort of make up for the games you have to Mr. Sinister instead of using Brood, as those Doom bots are really, really big and really, really powerful. Wave gives you an extra chance to get Doom out, and Iron Lad is a great hit on Doom. It's a really powerful deck. This is probably the best deck in the game. This is where I'm going to start testing Doom to see if he's back in the middle. W came in second. This morning's video for more. W came in second. This uh, last weekend at Snapcom using this deck, except it had Claw in the Dr. Doom spot. I'm not sure if Doom, even at his previous glory, is better than Claw in this deck. Claw's value and being able to be played on turn 5 when you don't wave is very high. But considering that W made the original Doom wave, I thought it was worth throwing Doom into this to see. The basic gist of the deck is you get out your ones and protect them with armor, you spread power out with Mr. Fantastic, and you stop one lane with Cyclops. Then you either go wide with Doom or you go tall with Claw. Works out really, really well. Sorry, after a wave on 5, I do. So that your Hulk will grow further and your opponent is limited in their plays while you grow Sunspot, Nebula, it's uh with Misty. Mr. Fantastic is adding power multiple lanes, and then you're going. Should work really well. This deck is really, really good. We've got the OG Sand Ramp next. I hit infinite with a version of this second season playing. Very little has changed. Jeff is in the deck. If you don't have Jeff, I suggest running Psylocke because Psylocke on um, three lets you get a Sadman or Black Panther or Era out early, and that sets up enough other combos for your deck, really, especially Sandman. This version of the deck really badly does want Sandman on four. So you're using Electro to hopefully get Sandman on four. Then you can go Panther into Zola. You can go Doom into Odin. You can go, um, you can make lots of powerful plays and Marvel Snap, and it should work out great. Um, one of the best things you can do is go Electro into Panther, into uh, Zola, into Odin on Zola, and then you're going to spread those Panthers out even further, getting really... Magneto's a great, just big old disruption card. He's the best big disruption card. If your opponent's limited where they can play, they can either choose to play everything on the Nebula lane, and then you give up that lane and win elsewhere, or Nebula gets big enough to really compete, and Electro... Um, and Jeff have really nice synergy, wherein if you want to play a, say, black, uh, if you want to play, I guess, what would that be? Uh, you would have six on five, so you would have to be playing a four. No, I guess Jeff is just a nice backup plan if you want to get him out. He's not especially great here, so feel free to chuck him. Uh, I'm going to change him for Psylocke in my opinion. Arrow is nice because your opponent can only play one card, and if that one card goes exactly where you want it to, you win. So you can do something like... um. Electro into Sandman into Doom into Arrow, and that can win you some games of Snap. At that point, you could actually play Jeff with Arrow. There you go. I knew it was there right? when I put the deck together. Um, Doom as a four cost was garbage in this deck. I think he's decent now. I think this deck has a real shot at competing. All right, Rock Slide as a 3 3 is a ridiculously huge change. Uh, this is supposedly a nerf, but I don't think so. I think you'd have to be a 4 3 for this to be a real nerf. What this does mean is that Darkhawk is now decoupled from Zabu. It still really likes Zabu, but uh, cards like Miles and Stature and Kitty are what you can play 
if you don't see Zabu at the end of the game with Darkhawk and be just fine, whereas Rock Slide on three is one of the most disruptive things you can do. I think that this is sort of a sideways buff, and Rock Slide is one of the secretly most powerful cards in the game. When you draw more cards than your opponent, that's part of why those Dark Heads are so power Dark Hawk decks are so powerful for so long. Because your opponent has Rock Slide, right? Uh, and you're drawing rocks while they're drawing room. Here we have another Doom Wave. This one is running a Dark Hawk package. Fundamentally, uh, and you'll note, sorry, Rock Slide's still showing as a 4 or 5. It takes a little while for the sites to update with the changes. No big deal. Just remember it's a 3 3 in the deck. Um, this should work really well, right? Like you can rock, you can, if you can still go Zabu and Rock Slide, you're just losing a little power in the process, but fine. Um, if you miss Zabu, you can now go Korg into Jeff or Silk into Rock Slide. That's going to move that Silk, and now you can play whatever other card with your Miles, right? Um, or you can just drop the Absorbing Man to copy the Rock Slide. Absorbing Man can also, if you wave on four, you can wave on four and five. To go something like Iron Lad and Doom, or um, you can go Rock Slide, um, Dark Hawk and Doom, right, while limiting your opponent's plays extremely effectively. You can uh, also use Absorbing Man to copy an Iron Lad that has copied a Rock Slide or a Doom perfectly effectively. It should work really well. Uh, Absorbing Man also can copy Shang-Chi, who gets the Zebu tree. This deck, I think, is going to be powerful. This might be a real force in the meta going forward. This is what I think the current best version of the Dark Hawk shell is. And I think Rockside is better in this version. Okay, so I took that best deck earlier and said, so Absorber Man is a three now, but that means he gets buffed by Surfer. So why not add Dark Hawk to the deck? So I just added a Dark Hawk package, right? I said, okay, so if we're running... Um, Dark Hawk, that also gives us access to Zebu and Iron Lad, right? Like Iron Lad and uh, Absorb Man are already in the deck. So this is just adding one more four drop. And then everything else remains the same. I thought Saru would be really good as sort of a backup uh, Zebu and a way to get a bunch of cards out at the end of the game. This can play even more like a traditional surfer list where you don't have to sort of tip your hand. You can go like Zebu into uh, Rock Slide, right? Into Iron Lad into Sarah. And then your last turn play can be um, a two-cost brood, a two-cost absorbing man, and a two-cost surfer. And that seems really, really strong to me. So I think this deck might be better as well. Um, I think Rock Slide was buffed. I don't know how else to say this. I think Rock Slide is just better than he was yesterday. All right, Legion loses one power. It's not ideal. You don't want to see Legion caught with one less power. Um, but like he's gonna be fine, just like Black Bolt was. People are gonna play him less, just like they did Black Bolt, and then his stats are gonna be fine. And eventually, people come back here and go, "Oh wait, he's still good." Guess what? He's still good. This is the Moyan deck. This is the current, probably best version of the best deck in the game. Nothing about it changes based on Legion being a five seven. Now it loses one power. It usually wasn't winning on that power. It matters a little bit in that now Legion is significantly worse than America when the opponent has to play America, but, like, you'll be fine. Um, this deck is completely nuts and busted, and stay tuned tomorrow morning. I'm going to do my first 100% full deck guide on this very deck. Next up, we have Den Wave. Den posted this deck on Twitter. Den is a legendary Marvel Snap Zone creator. This is sort of his version of a Doom Wave. That's also running Silver Samurai, which I thought was really cool because it can use um, Silver Samurai to ramp up to a six cost, right? Silver Samurai hitting an X-23 is an early Doom, which is extremely powerful. Um, you can also Silver Samurai on four and ramp your four into a five, get out Legion at five, seven or Black Bolt early, all of which seems really, really freaking powerful. You can do that with Iron Lad too. And your downside with Silver Samurai with Wolverine in the deck is fundamentally that he is a 4-9, or Colleen works as a 2-8. Either one of those seems pretty free, right? This deck is very cool and very powerful and 100% worth playing. Uh, Silver Samurai is like a meta card. If you haven't been paying attention. It's really, really good, as I promised you it would be. All right, next is Captain Marvel. I think this, buff act, this nerf actually matters. 
I think that because she's so clunky in the way she works, that losing one power 4-4 four, four is one of those breakpoints that's seriously worse than 4-5. Four, five. Four, a 5-7 five, and 5-8 five, are close enough. 4-5 and 4-6 are close enough. 4-4 four, four, and we're starting to get to bad numbers. And I think that actually might be a problem for her. But um, we've got our move wave deck. This is the uh, Lambie version. He called this House Hunters. This is a version that decided to basically say, all right, well, if I've got wave, I might as well add Doom, right? And now that it's got wave and Doom, it's still got Captain Marvel as a way to pump Craven, as a way to do extra stuff. I don't know anymore. I'm not as sold as this on this as I was a day ago or two days ago. Um, I think Captain Marvel's change genuinely makes it worse because so much of the meta is five, just like we saw with the Doom bots earlier. We've got Lambie's Confusion. This is the deck that Lambie has been trumpeting. It's probably was, as of yesterday, the second best deck in the game. This deck lost two points of stats, which is not, like, terrible. But Captain Marvel is a four and Legion is a seven. I think that it weakens the deck. I think this is still likely one of the best decks in the game. Lambie calls this Silky Smooth. Um, it should still work totally fine without it and be very, very good. I think the Captain Marvel nerf hurts this but I don't think it breaks this. It is now, however, probably the weakest card in the deck at this point, so if you're looking to replace a card, Captain Marvel would be that card. Vision is now clearly better. Like, Vision was the swing card earlier, I think Captain Marvel would be the swing card. We've got uh, House Hunters Season 2, the repeat, the version that has Silver Samurai of the genius Safety Blades decks. This deck should still work. Captain Marvel's nerf here doesn't break anything because what matters is that she still is not going to be the lowest power card in your hand and so not conflict with chucking honestly usually wolverine or a late craven or angela that you don't really want so captain marvel's still good here um is she changeable in this deck yes now more than she was right again i'm not sold on her being like a necessity anymore if you wanted shang now that would be my change but this deck has won an infinity border already it's a great deck and we're This is the Shuri Kitty deck that we've been seeing all over the place. Um, I think Captain Marvel might get cut from here. Because, like, what you really wanted to do with Captain Marvel here was Shuri Captain Marvel to get it to 10. I guess you can still Hulk Buster it, and it's 9, so that's great. But 8 is significantly less than 10 here. Well, 9 is still fine, and while, um, and, like, Forge being eight, uh, 7 here is pretty bad. So, like, the Forge and Hulkbuster lines just sort of die for Captain Marvel, so I'm not a thousand percent sure she's worth it anymore. The basic play line, by the way, is you play Kitty a lot. You'd really like to pump Kitty with Forge, Hulkbuster, and Shuri. And then last turn, you end up going Kitty into Taskmaster for, like, uh, 20, 30 power in each location. So, like, you go Kitty on one, um, Kitty on two. So now Kitty is four, right? Then you go Forge Kitty on three. So Kitty is 5 plus 3, Kitty is 8. Then you go, um, Kitty will be 9 when you Kitty Hulkbuster, and then that's 14. Um, and then you say 28 with Shuri, right? Bounces to hand, 29, and then you play 29 Kitty, 29 Taskmaster. It's the basic gist of the deck, so Captain Marvel like isn't super important, except that, as you know, if you've ever played any card game, seeing that perfect draw lineup is not always going to happen. And Captain Marvel being a card that you could be like, alright, well I've got a 410 flies to wherever I need it to win at the end of the game that I can play under armor that doesn't have to stay under armor was really less good now, but at least you still have vision. Next up we have Lady Deathstrike, and this is a huge breakpoint. Lady Deathstrike doubling to 8 or being forged to 7 is humongous. And the real reason for that is a lot of those the best deck in the game that we've talked about so many times, the Brood Absorber Man tomorrow's deck, will now be crushed under Lady Deathstrike's heel. Lady Deathstrike will be able to fundamentally wipe them out of lanes. I don't think that they can recover if that happens. They're going to have to start getting their Patriots out early to even compete, but even then you can still wipe out the Brood lane, and that's usually going to be enough to beat that deck. I think that this is huge, and Lady Deathstrike might actually be meta now. Um, her 4 means that with that 7 is... Um, she's doing, she was already doing a good job of killing Silk with Forge, but now she's even getting one higher. Like, it's just, she's, I think she's good. I think this is a good change, and now she's a good card. You don't love playing Forge on four, but for this kind of upside, I think you do it. I think there's a Death Strike deck that is 
going to be meta now. And this is Algod's list. Hey, Algod, feel better soon. I know you've been sick. Hopefully you're still watching. If you're not, hey, just get better. Your health comes first. The basic gist of this deck is you kill a bunch of stuff, and then your null is huge. Lady of the Strike makes that significantly better. You would use Negasonic with Phoenix Force to kill stuff. You use Shauna and Squirrel Girl with Killmonger to kill stuff. You use Carnage to kill stuff. And sometimes you just Carnage Multiple Man and you make a Phoenix for, uh, Multiple Force that you drag, drag all around. All these kills make death free. And then you have a big old death and null in human. Deck is A, really cool. And B, I think actually like good now. I think like we're finally at a point where this is a deck, not just something fun to catch opponents off guard with. Next up, we've got Destroy. This is probably the best thing. Um, I'm not sure about Sabretooth in this deck. Sabretooth should probably be a American Confess, but I really like Sabretooth, so here's Sabretooth. Um, basically, you kill Deadpool a lot, then your Null is huge, and when you're killing X-23 with Deadpool, you can play both Null and Death. Um, Lady of Death Strike here is replacing Taskmaster. I think Taskmaster is generally better on the list. It depends how much Silver Samurai you're seeing in the meta, but Silver Samurai discarding your um Taskmaster basically all the time is pretty bad for you. Meanwhile, uh Carnage eating Sabretooth and Deadpool makes everything huge. Um Venom eating a large Deadpool can often just win a win a lane all by himself. And this deck is very strong and very cool worth testing out and playing. It's the reason you're seeing armor in so many of the earlier decks in this video, because armor will help shut this deck down. Next up, we have a pure Death Strike deck. Um, I found this on Untapped, and I think it's really cool. And I think, like, if it wasn't good yesterday, it is good now. I'm going to make a suggested change. I think this deck really wants Daken. I think Daken is excellent and really fits in here. I'd probably run Daken over Shang-Chi, who I don't think it was good right now. But I think that um, Okoye, Forge, and um, Nakia with Daken are all good. You also have the seemingly omnipresent they're gonna have to nerf this next week but the seemingly omnipresent brood absorbing man combo to really really take advantage of everything to like so you can use that power combo that benefits from akoya and akia right um and you can forge it and so on and then like at the end of the, you're not pumping that with patriot you're instead saying all right i am gonna kill my opponent's stuff with lady death strike and just win this. it's a really cool deck you also have Black Panther, who's here just because he benefits from all the pumps, right? And if you've got a Koye Forge and Akia, Black Panther might end up like a 5-7. Uh, if then he's a 5-14, and he's amazing stats, and like, why would you not play a 5-14? That seems really, really good. All right. If you can't find a deck here to try, I'm very sorry. But remember that there's always at least two decks every single weekday on this channel. So please make sure you check back tomorrow morning. For two more brand new peace everybody see you soon don't forget to enter the giveaway